hi everyone. Uh, my name is Daha. I'm an Advent and Concept Artist over at Brainstorm School, and here we have David Coleman, one of our latest instructors. Uh, David is a senior storyboard artist and concept designer in the film industry. He specializes in both live action and animation. His clients include uh, Walt Disney Pictures, Legendary, Sony, Paramount, Skydance, Netflix, Universal, Warner Bros, many, many more. The script uh, goes on. <laughs> so currently he is storyboarding uh, the Lion King prequel for Walt Disney Pictures. And now he's teaching with us in his upcoming storyboard mechanics flash class and character design flash class. So David, hand of a brush, mind of a camera, who is David Coleman? Wow, you've read my website, I think. I, I did. <laughs> and I haven't even launched that. I haven't made that available public yet because there's still some ND, NDA stuff on there. We just revamped oh. that, but we put the quotes up. Um, it's it. fine. It's totally fine. You can make it available. It's okay oh, until good. somebody tells me to take it down. It's just there's one movie <laughs> on there, um, Renfield, that has that comes out in a month. So I think that's probably why. But oh, I'll get, if anything, sense. somebody will tell me to. Don't worry I about it. So um, can you rephrase um, your question? And do you mind if I kind of correct on a few things on there? Is that OK? Yeah, absolutely. So, what would you, well, would you I like guess to I do? Have finished, I have finished for, I just finished boarding uh, the Mufasa um, Lion King prequel for Walt Disney Pictures. And there was DreamWorks. And now I'm back at Walt Disney Pictures on Tron 3. It's been announced, so I'm allowed to say that. Uh, it's another big live action like CG hybrid. Um, Congratulations. Who is David Coleman? Is that what you asked? Yes, you yes. Asked? Who, uh, who is David? <laughs> I'm a nut job is who I am. I don't know. Um, <laughs> one thing is for sure, anyone who knows me is I'm a lot. Uh, I'm a lot to deal with, uh, not in a bad way, but I just always have to bring a lot of energy and enthusiasm. I think that's why I like teaching so much, and I think that's why what I try to bring to my classes and try to inspire other people's students and coworkers and everything. And I just, I don't know, I think because um, I have a lust for life, so maybe that's why I'm so enthusiastic and energetic. It's just who I am. I pass that on to my youngest, uh, much to her chagrin either way. Uh, she's very much me. And and my eldest is a little bit more from, from my wife's side, but, and hard to believe, she's sensitive and shy, and I was sensitive and shy when I was very young. Current friends today have no idea how that's possible, but that's who I was when I grew up for sure. Um, you know, and uh, I've been working in entertainment for, oh God, uh, 20 years about now. And um, wow. I didn't go to big art school. I, I fell in love with drawing again when I was at UC Santa Barbara and I uh, you know, double majored in art, but art up there was, and communication. I thought I'd go into advertising. I fell in love with my drawing when I was up there again. And um, it, the art program there was like, draw what you feel. And sculpting class was like, make a boat out of paper and float in it. And it was like, ugh. So it just was more of a liberal arts program. And so when I got yeah. out, I, I, I'm not like so many people out there who like made little films in their backyard and dreamt of working in animation or games or film. Yeah, how did you get started? It was then? really, what's that? I'm sorry? How'd you get started? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, and when I was younger, like, I think at one point when I was younger, I was like, oh, I always, I wanted to design skateboard decks, and it's funny, there's a ton of old skateboard decks, I used to skate a lot when I was younger, and, um, or, or, or um, uh, album covers, or I love Mad Magazine, you know, uh, and then, you know, when I got out, when I got out of college, I, people even looked at my work, and I didn't even know, like, animation or film was a possibility, and at that time, I... I was told, oh, you're really good at capturing per people's personality. You'd be a good character designer. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, these weren't people that were blown steam up my body. They were, they were industry professionals. I was working at my dad's law firm during the day and then, um, you know, uh, trying to find my way at night. And, and I said, do I have to go to a big art school? I said, no, not anymore. You can go to, like, you know, the, the animators union and kind of learn from active working professionals. So it's not to discourage anyone from big universities, but schools like Brainstorm are fantastic because it allows you to pick and choose. And like you're in a, you know, think about like you're in a bake shop, bakery and you don't have to order everything. You can just take, oh, let me try this. Oh, I like that cupcake. Let me have a little bit of this or so on and so forth. Um, 
uh, you know, or if it's a health food store for many other people, I actually don't eat that many right. sweets. So for me, it'd be a health food store. But, uh, you know, whatever it is, my point is, it's like a, what's great with schools like Brainstorm, it's a cornucopia of, of, uh, of an introduction to the industry and industry professionals like myself. So I took a bunch of night school courses back then at a place called Associates in Art, and I would, I would study every night, and then I'd work my dad's law firm during the day, and then I'd go to the zoo on the weekends and study animals, like, almost every weekend. Like, I was manic about it. And I really just put in a lot of time on my own. I would take these night courses like here before there was like an internet. Um, I know that's how old I am. Uh, I think email was just becoming a thing back then. And I um, would really work at it on my own. And then I ended up getting a job. I couldn't get a job as an artist because I was told I didn't have experience or union or whatever. I got a job in the mailroom at Disney and worked my way up that way. And I met a lot of artists there and I talked my way into a lot of classes. I introduced myself to people like Paul Felix and even an artist like Steven Silver and talked my way into life drawing classes. And I dropped mail off at artist desks along with drawings. And I was just shameless as all ever, as ever, you know. And um, H-E double hockey sticks, I was, I was definitely uh, um, shameless about and putting myself out there. I, I, I became an extrovert around that time and it helped me. Um, you know, I came out of my shell, you know, that point in my life, maybe because I broke up with an ex-girlfriend and I knew I had to, if I wanted to be anyone, I had to, I had to stop being so shy, but, you know, and, and I think just kind of, and that's, what's important out there is you always have to kind of put yourself out there and speak up for what you want. And, you know, when I eventually got hired, I couldn't get a job. I was already getting, I was already jaded. I, my work got sent over to Sony Pictures Animation. They were just starting and I got a phone call. That said, and that time I was a production assistant on the Winnie the Pooh Huffle Up movie. So I moved from mailroom and shipping to the copy room to uh, the Huffle Up movie. And I'd make like, when I worked in the copy room, I'd make little signs like of like my characters on them. Like, don't break the copy machine, you know, ask David or whatever. I was, I mean, I was, and I, I took advantage of, of the resources at Disney at that time. They had uh, not like the archives I have now, but they had archives in the TV animation department of all of these old model sheets and stuff. So I'd go and copy them on my lunch break. I would sit down in a cubicle and 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 draw in the cubicle. I'd find empty cubicles, like almost Steven Spielberg-esque. It almost like pretend I'd work there, um, you know, and, and really kind of uh, ingrained myself and dug deep and entrenched myself in everything that that opportunity allowed and offered, you know, just by working in operations at that level of the studio was my really learning ground, you know, was my art school. I mean, like, and I took art classes, like I said, but in terms of production art school, I really learned a lot there. But, you know, so when my work finally got over to Sony, they called me and said, we love your work. Um, did you send us an updated resume? I said, yes. They said, it says your production assistant on the Huffalot movie. I said, that's correct. They said, why? Because your art is beautiful. And I was like, uh, because when they called me back, I was so used to being rejected that I was like, okay, here's the thing. You want my address to return my portfolio? Okay, here it is. So <laughs> but when they asked this question and I said, oh, wow, it was like my ears perked up. They said, well, we want to meet you. We're starting a new division here. It was Sandy Raymond's, Ray, Ravens and Penny Finkelman Cox um, and Richie Chavez were starting an animation division at Sony. Who would, who would help start DreamWorks with Jeffrey Katzenberg. So uh, they said, we want to meet you. Can you come in and meet? I said, yeah. And they said, um, can you bring in your portfolio? I said, well, I sent it to you. And they said, uh, no, no, we want to see your originals. I thought that was weird. And I remember talking to Paul Felix. I was friendly with him at the time. And he said, well, that's kind of odd. Don't leave your originals there. That weekend I went home and I cataloged all like life drawings and character designs and studies from the zoo with animals and and uh, what I felt was visual development art and put in these big folders and I walked in and it was not like in an HR office. I walked into a big conference room and I met Sandy and and she said, you know, um, well, they first said, I don't know which order to kind of kind of happened, but they first said, well, we, we she said, nice to meet you. By the way, like, why aren't you working? And I said, well, I'm not, I'm not in the union and I don't have enough experience. And she says, does Disney know you're here right now? I said, no, no, no. They think I'm at a dentist appointment. She said, okay, when can you start? And I was like, what? 
I like, couldn't believe she thought that they were like stealing me out from under their nose. And I was like, uh, I looked at my watch and I was like, yesterday? I'm like, five minutes ago? I could start five minutes ago. Um, and she says, great, let's see your work. I mean, it was very exciting for me. And as I started going through it, it was like, Richie came down and a couple other artists were just kind of flipping through my, and here I am. It was a surreal experience. And I asked them like, why did you want to see my originals? They said, because we thought your, your work was, you had, your work was amazing and such raw talent, but you had no experience. We thought you were stealing from people. We honestly thought that you were stealing your art from other people and writing it off as your own. Because apparently it's happened before. And I was like, what? it was like a backhand of compliment. And they're like, but sure enough, this is yours. And we have not seen raw talent like this in a long time. Um, and they're like, you should be working. And so I was thrown into Polar Express uh, because they didn't, Sony Pictures Animation wasn't developed, wasn't like up and running. So I worked on Polar Express. I was one of the first traditional artists on there. I didn't design the scary children. No <gasps> of anyone working on that movie, but I just did a lot of concept design for the animals and, and it, it was, they started teaching me in 3D, but it was good to learn it, but it wasn't something I was passionate about. Right. Um, I really wanted to design and be a concept like this dev designer. And, um, and then it kind of just, and then that's really how it happened. Like overnight, I got an attorney. I all of a sudden started working with uh, like an Olympic level of talent. It was me, Richie Chavez, Paul Hussein, and then Marcelo Vignali, who became my mentor. Marcelo mentored me. And oddly enough, I'm ha having lunch with him today in about two hours, but he's oh, nice. become a of me. And yes, in art and life, he's, he's wonderful. And he helped train me and I, I learned everything like I had this raw talent but I really learned what it was to be like a production development artist um and I worked on open season and surfs up and then you know things didn't work out so well there and I went to work on boondock season one and then I and what was good about that is like Aaron Magruder asked me and I'll kind of breeze over the next few stuff he said you know well, I'm doing a tv show and I was aware of the comic strip and he said you know do you like He's like, you know, Huey is my take on anime. He's like, do you like anime? I was like, no. I mean, and I'll tell you, and probably all the listeners out there, are you serious? Just not, I wasn't the biggest fan, I respected it. He's like, well, do you want to come work with me? I said, yes. He was probably saying, like, what do you mean by that? I said, well, because it was another style to learn to add into my forte mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 my, and my, my um, design vocabulary, per se. It was something to add to my, my toolbox. And then into the rest is history. I worked there, went to class of 3000. I went to, and I'll kind of get even how I got in the story. I worked on um, a couple other things here and there. And then I started self-publishing art books because I went to San Diego Comic-Con and I saw what people were doing on their own. And I said, I can do this. I wanted to make a name for myself outside the studio. I didn't really know I was building my own brand, which is now called David's right. Doodles. And so I have an apparel line and a books and, and I've self-published seven art books and I you know, teach and all these different things. So I put out a book. My book got into the hands of the great Aaron Blaze at Disney Feature at the time. They called me in. They interviewed me for character design on King of the Elves. Then they called me back and said, great, we want to hire you. We want to hire you as a story artist. And I was like, what? And they said, we know we're throwing you into the fire, but you deal with so much story in your characters and we love the way you draw because as a designer, you are designing who they are, not really just what they are. Right. So I was always kind of engrossed in the story of the characters anyway. And I was always studying cinematography on the side. I was just very enthralled with that style of filmmaking or that, that um, discipline and category of, of filmmaking, not style per se. That's the wrong word. Uh, but so they, and I was thrown into story. I fell on my face, man. I mean, I, you know, but I got, I learned a lot by the group from the great Oliver Thomas and Tron Mai, um, both taught me a lot about story. I went, I worked on King of the Elves. I went to work on, I designed and prep and landing. I worked on wreck at Ralph, which at that time was Joe Jump. So I worked on the first iter iteration of that. And then it just kind of steamrolled. And I, and I was then all of a sudden into story and I had story and design. And I still to this day do story and design. And many years down the line, then I got hired by Robert Rodriguez on in 2000, I'm going to say 18 on We Can Be Heroes. I got into the the eight, local uh, art directors guild 800 so i got into the live action side of things so i got into the union and then i ended up working going to work on set in atlanta 
on Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt and Yvonne Shavosky with Chris McKay as the director, and that was a cool experience. Although six weeks turned into six months, it was a hard time to be away from my family. But when I came back, the pandemic started, and I went back to live action. Fortunately, I turned down a job in Aquaman 2, and I went back, to, sorry, not back to live action, I went back to animation. I turned down a job in live action because everything shut down for the pandemic, and I was happy we were working from home because I'd worked, um, you know, uh, on, on, you know, on set in Atlanta away from my girls, you know, so it was really you know, hard for me. Um, and that time I was also, you know, designing on, on a film for Skydance. So I was doing story and design, like I'd work on set in Atlanta boarding, and then I'd be in my hotel room at night, like designing for Skydance. And I'd like, and I was always drawing traditionally. And then I would like go and scan it, like either FedEx Kinkos or sneak into to the to to the uh, production offices and scan it there. But you know, it, it, what happens? Design and story became they're like my two daughters. I love them for different reasons, and I'm very passionate about both. And I still get hired for both. And it is another way to feed my family, but it's another way to I think express my creativity and have another uh have have various outlets to express my creativity and contribute to films on different levels i have been on many films where i do design and story like on the same film yeah. they have me do design work and then when there's downtime we'll go into story and i go back and forth and it's good because i'm dealing with i understand the characters well enough so it works out fairly well um and it's been and now just throwing live action into that into that mix has also been a nice uh thing to add to my to my uh, repertoire per se. Yes. And that's, you know, in a nutshell, how I've become where I am now. Um, and uh, that's it for that, but I could talk for hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Tell us a little about your, your class, um, speaking on live action. Perfect. As um, well as story well, and design. You've got a few uh, flash yeah, classes coming. So I think, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's a good, good segue into that. You know, and why I teach also, people even ask why I teach and, and you know, I because I've been where you've all been. I've been hungry. Like I said, I didn't go to a big art school. I attended a school that's similar to Brainstorm. Uh, you have the advantage of now doing it online and the level of skill amongst the teachers is incredible. I, I, I like seeing everyone taking advantage of it, but I like to give back. I like to help others grow. I like to share my knowledge, you know, and, I'm on a personal crusade to build the best artists out there, uh, you know, because I want to know that if I am working on another film or the next film I work on, and I happen to maybe come across someone that I taught, I know that they learned properly and really studied the fundamentals and foundations of whatever discipline that is. And they're, they're some of the best artists out there. Not saying that I create the best artists out there, but my crusade is to give you the tools you need to grow and become very successful in a very competitive industry so i like to give back because i i i i know that desire i know that passion i know that 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 drive and so i'm there to assist that and help your dreams come true you know and so that's really why i like to teach and that's why i really love also about brainstorm and it allows me to teach all over the world which you know i haven't been able to do in the past i mean i've been teaching for about as long as I've been in the industry, I mean, I started teaching at the zoo before I worked in the industry. Um, I know very much my animal work, but uh, the class here for storyboard, for storyboard mechanics, which is my one that's coming up, I just felt there was that you could talk story for hours and story development and 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 you know theme and log lines and developing story for your own characters, developing your own projects. And that's all well and good, and I think that's great, but I felt that there is a real need. I really believe in fundamentals and foundational yes. drawing skills. I've applied that to the you know, storytelling, storyboarding, and that's why I created this newer class called Storyboard Mechanics. Absolutely, um, and um, in, in that case, what kinds of skills are you hoping to foster within uh, your class? So Storyboard Mechanics is, you know, we deal everything from just having to craft and block in a scene to all the, different types of camera moves um, to um, the idea of, of uh, you know, acting as well. Um, even we touch a little bit on pitching, we do that even a little bit more in the breakout course as well. Um, 
and also how to just even board from an actual script, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, even one course just alone is just spent on blocking, you know, and just understanding and setting up your characters and setting the stage the, the, for choreography of how the characters are gonna play out. Um, you know, and understanding what diff what the what camera language is, and using the camera as a character, and even how to animate, and move that camera, and make the audience feel like they're part of the the scene, and it's an immersive level of filmmaking that I like to bring to to my own work, but also that I like to um, teach those around me, and I pitch this course as this is the course that's going to get you a job um because it gives you all the skills knowledge and functional um information functional knowledge that'll be very applicable in the job force you know and giving you real scripts to work from um and getting real world practical experience from also and 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 knowledge and and instruction from someone who's currently working on you know some of the bigger titles of today yeah that absolutely makes sense what do you um as far as like i suppose um philosophies and um i guess other uh parts of what you know in your experience what um what would you like your students to get out of your class to that extent what i want them to get out of it i want them to be well this i want I, I mean as i've mentioned a personal crusade to create great artists in the industry I mean, I even begin the class, which I'm going to crusade to build the best story team out there. Uh, people that I know I can work with um, if they are ready to step up to the challenge or when they're ready. So I, you know, I can almost guarantee that uh, I never want to promise because it's really falls on the student. Of course. But if you follow the lessons and demonstrations that I do, and listen to what I have to say, because it is a lot of discussion and 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 talk as well as not so much the pretty pictures. Um, it's about understanding the functional knowledge. Uh, I can guarantee you will grow and and find value in this course and be able to apply it as you as you grow and thrive to to work in the industry if you're not already working in the industry. And if you're already working in the industry, I'll help get you to the next level. I you know I, I promise. Um, and you know. I'm there to help you also as an individual, so I really encourage you to reach out to me, you know, even during the, the sake of the class, the live sessions, if you cannot, what's so great about this class structure, brainstorm structure, is you can watch all the videos online at your own leisure, and again and again, while the class is over the, you know, what, five weeks of the course, but reach out to me and ask questions and let me know if you don't understand something. I accept all levels, you know, I have people asking things like, can you explain what blocking is? Can you actually explain what you know what a difference between a dolly and a pan is, or something like that? So, um, you know, I'm there to kind of help talk you through that stuff. So there's no silly questions in anything like this. And I want you to leave this course feeling you have a better understanding of what it is to be a story artist and what it takes on a day-to-day -day basis to execute that job. Yes, absolutely. And um, I've admin for your class in the past, and you've always been so energetic and lively, as well as just so informative. All of your knowledge is so grounded and it, just so much experience. I, you know, even just kind of listening to it on the side, I, I just learned so much. So I really appreciate that. Um, you heard it, everyone. She you heard, heard it. it. You heard it here. Right. Right here. Practical testimonial say, right there. Thank you. Exactly. I, of course, of course. No, I, I heavily advocate for your class. Um, I do want to ask, like, if you were to speak to David in the past, David as a student, the hungry, go-getter, ambitious, um, raw talent, you know, like, what, uh, what, what kind of words of advice would you give to that version of David in the past? What would you give to the students of now, even? You know, there's probably all these cliches out there, and but cliches are cliches because true. Cliches um, are fun. <laughs> they they're applicable in a lot of situations. Yeah. Um, you know, I think. Um, well, I even said it back then, but you gotta want it. You gotta want it. It's there's and unfortunately there is no this is not the matrix. There's no magic pill to take. You know, 
that definitely probably dates me. I swear if some people are young that they're like the matrix, that's like 20 years old or something like that. But the um, the point is that there's no magic answer. There's no magic. There's no special button to push. You've got to put in the time. You've got to want it. Um, and, you know, it's worth it when you get there. It is a struggle to see your peers succeed in other fields when you're not really growing because it is a highly competitive industry. But I promise you it's worth it when you get there. Um, to and to try to prevail through adversity relatively within this field i'm saying adversity diversity could be as simple as your parents not being supportive of you luckily i had parents who were supportive of me but i think even my mom said what's your plan b i said i don't have a plan b because i i intend on succeeding my plan a was to work in this industry um and you know there'll be a lot of other naysayers and there are you know many people have to give up on their dreams i'm like but 90 percent of the job force hates their job i'm one of the 10 percent that loves what he does and i think everyone in the industry has to remember that and i don't take anything i do for granted i think that's why i work so much i think that's why i have the enthusiasm i have this lust for life because i love what i've what i've chosen to do now i'm not gonna lie even when you get to professional level of where i am a seasoned senior professional the hustle is real people you still have to hustle for jobs they're in la the lack of job security is real i mean yeah you there are there are quite a few i think it's a, a smaller percentage who have been at like disney or dreamworks or sony you know since the inception and they are you know high on the high on the chain uh regardless of if they are a filmmaker uh, or, 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 but, or lead at all. Uh, but it's rare, you know, um, I think being versatile and having a strong skill set uh, in many different avenues has allowed me to work on many different things and keep it interesting and unique and allow, it's, it's almost created a, a metaphorical safety net because no such thing as a safety net, but it allows me to kind of go, I can go design on this if I'm not, if there's no board jobs, but you know i think i think god really wanting it is one of the things um having an open mind and being receptive and listening i you know i'm telling myself the the, the past david which is a good way to put it this but i did listen so it's not i'm just kind of i if anything i'm reinforcing and i think a lot of how i got here today is because i did follow those though that bit of advice I was told by an artist once when I was working on Stuart Little 3, of all things, at Sony TV. Um, not particularly great, but I was getting paid to draw. I wasn't flipping burgers so uh, or crunching numbers or trying a case in court, per se. Uh, but he said, you know, it's great. You know, you, you're, really, you're really listening to what I'm saying. And I was like, well, yeah. He's like, you know, there's so many young artists who just feel they know everything. So uh, you, you were very receptive, and, and it's, it's refreshing what I was told by this old artist. And I think his name, was it Phil Barlow? I think it was Phil Barlow who said that. And I, that stuck with me. And I think moving forward, I try to be open-minded. You know, there's always, I think every artist has an ego because an ego allows you to thrive because it's more of its act of confidence that you know you can do the job. But I'm not gonna lie to you either. Uh, every Monday I go through imposter syndrome and go like, uh, uh, do I remember how to storyboard? Uh, you know, I think you have to go uh, through those up and down sometimes, the uh, balance, right? Everyone. <laughs> and I talk to people who like are also, you know, very high up in the industry and they're like, dude, it's so real. I was like, I know it is. <laughs> I story panel at Lightbox with the Copeland brothers and, uh, John Hoffman from Pixar. We were all talking about it. We're yeah. all like, hey, out that we don't know what we're doing um <laughs> but uh it's it's i think that type of anxiety allows you to it, it that's the anxiety that every artist needs to thrive you know um so those are just a few of the ideas that i think you know uh are are, are something i would pass on and pass on to to artists is, and and be a sponge as much as possible you know learn learn from the masters brad bird said that to me when i met him i yes. volunteered at any awards uh like as an usher you know just to get close to these people i did all that type of stuff when i was younger how i can get in anyway and i chatted with him and i said the best advice was learn from the masters that's what he always said you know and that's why that stuck with me too you know study artists of the past 
whether it's uh, animators of the past or um, artists and illustrators and fine artists in, in art history. Uh, you know, there's something to be said about that. There are so many more philosophies, I think, that I would say. But the other thing being is don't cut corners. Um, study the, what study the a corner. Yeah, what, what does cutting a corner mean to you? Don't pass over, like, you know, learning serious good draw, drawing skills and getting good at the draftsmanship just because you're so excited about the new tool in Photoshop or a new program. You know, drawing is drawing. Uh, you know, draftsmanship is draftsmanship no matter what whatever it is you're using. So don't skip over that stuff because it will show, it'll hold you back. I pride myself on being a good draftsman and I feel I'm, I am a good draftsman and it allows me to succeed in what's necessary for the job. So I can focus on designing and creating the, a desired result from a specific arrangement of shapes or in storyboarding, I can worry about storytelling and how to, and the cinematic film language I'm, I'm employing, uh, as well as the, you know, kind of just as simple down as the, the daily mechanics of, of moving a camera through a scene, because my fundamentals are so strong, my draftsmanship so strong, I can focus on those things instead. Instead, Glenn Keane said it, he said, he's worked so hard on drawing that would so, and he's gotten so good at it, that when it comes to animating or storyboarding, he can just focus on the storytelling, he can just let go. So that's what I mean is don't cut the corners and, and skip the foundation, the fundamentals and the things that this school, you know, provides for you. Um, learn from us, you know, learn from the professionals. We are working on a day-to-day, -day, uh, in the industry on a day-to-day -day basis. We are up to speed on what is coming and what's needed and we are probably the best resource out there for you uh you know so you have an advantage to those who might be stuck in a four-year university learning from a teacher who might have just used to work in the industry nothing nothing to badmouth anyone like that but, but you have to understand someone who's working who's currently working in the industry has a lot can have a lot more a lot more to offer in terms of what the current state of the industry is and what's necessary you know so um to kind of to conclude and, and and circle back here um the idea of just kind of learning all you can of those foundations right and really understanding whatever discipline is you're doing um focusing on the fundamentals you know uh like well in boarding there's a lot but just having being a good draftsmanship and understanding camera language, design having really serious good draftsmanship and understanding your your subject and your source and being able to break down shapes from humans and, and animals and, and even you know mechanical you know uh, devices and things for making robots and understanding what good design is. If you're dealing with you know your environment or environmental painter, like understanding lighting and value and color theory and and, and studying plein air painting. You know, all of these things can help. You know, all of the fancy digital tools out there are all great, but they're nothing if you don't have the serious foundation and fundamentals needed to grow, thrive, and never really have a true ceiling on where you can go in this business. That was wonderful. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> uh -huh. I think I think that's that's honestly about it. Like, do you have any final words to say before we take off? just be kind i think that that's just one thing i pass on to my kids which is just be kind don't murder someone is a close second but uh honestly i think the best the, 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 you can you can quote me on this whatever it is you do be your best self that's it that's great thank you so much thank you david and all right Dehan, that's you... great. Yeah. wait what no, no, no. Thank you. And I got your name right. It's fantastic. No, yeah, that's great. Uh, no, no, thank you for allowing me to do this. I always love to, I mean, I could talk for hours on this and, and hopefully this was enough for you as well. And um, uh, hopefully I'll be seeing some of you in my classes coming up. We'll see you on the flip side then. Bye, David. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.